What's going on, everybody? It's Cooper. The Welcome to Cooperville podcast is proudly brought to you by Midwest Meals. We are getting into fall season, full effect. And if you're from the Midwest, you know what that means. And I see people posting about it on the socials all the time. Ooh, it's crockpot season. It's time to eat crap. This is where the train derails, people. I'm not saying don't make crockpot meals. It's not what I'm saying. Make it a part of your repertoire. But if you start that vicious cycle of eating like crap now, then New Year's rolls around and you're like, oh, damn, now I got to make that resolution. And then what happens? Your resolution falls off by the end of January. Keep it on the tracks, people. MidwestMeals.com. They have 12 rotating meals. You can pick and choose, add to your cart, add to your meal plan. You can also build a meal. My favorite, the uh, four-ounce chicken build a meal with broccoli and loaded mashed potatoes with barbecue sauce from our friends at Chip Magnet Salsa. So you can have those crockpot meals. Maybe save them for a football Sunday. But then the rest of the week, get after it with quick, easy, and clean eating meals with all your macros and your calorie count on there and keep yourself on the track. Go to MidwestMeals.com and get 10% off your first order. The promo code is COOPER at checkout. Hashtag MidwestFitFam. Podcast also brought to you by Violent Gentleman Hockey Club. Hockey season in full effect. You want to gear up. You want to look like you know what you're doing. Join the badass revolution at ViolentGentleman.com for all your hockey swag. They got t-shirts. They got hoodies. Yeah, it's hoodie weather. I'm looking at you. Hats and flags. Everything you need to show your enthusiasm for the sport. And also that you're a badass. ViolentGentleman.com. Promo code is Cooperville15 to get 15% off that first order of Violent Gentleman gear. Monster Energy, of course, bringing you the Welcome to Cooperville podcast, whether it's Monster Ultra, whether it's Monster Hydro, whether it's Muscle Monster, incorporated into your life. You're going to hit that lull in the afternoon. Get the kick in the ass you need with Monster Ultra, zero calories, zero sugar. Get you a little pep in your step to get through the rest of your day and become accomplished. Hashtag Monster Podcasts. Great episode of the podcast is about to hit your ear holes. Jim Brewer, not the comedian, we'll talk about that, trainer, coach, fitness expert, co-owner of Momentum Sport Fitness, and we are covering it all. From getting off of the couch and into the gym, to setting goals, to mental health, and how to keep yourself motivated and engaged in your workout program. Because it's all relative, people. Strong body, strong mind. The Jim Brewer episode of the Welcome to Cooperville podcast, that starts right now. (laughs) Welcome to Cooperville. Do you know what's fun to do in Cooperville? Pack up your shit and get the fuck out. Listen. The Welcome to Cooperville podcast. On demand anywhere quality podcasts are available. And some places where cheap podcasts are available. And the local gas station has some. Subscribe. Get updates. Feel better about your life. Welcome to Cooperville.com. Welcome to Cooperville. Make sure you use a coaster. The wife gets upset when we leave rings on the tables. It's an interesting story about how Brewer and I met, Jim Brewer. Have you did you get the knock the comedian? Have you gotten that before? Since I was six years old. I was going to say. Yes, he came out with a show that was like, I don't even think it got six episodes. <laughs> and I was in kindergarten, and everyone's like, oh, this show, Jim Brewer. And I'm like, I'm I'm Jim Brewer. Who's this other clown? <laughs> and then Half Bait came out, and I'm like, oh, this oh, guy's actually oh, that guy. And then okay. Goatman, SNL. So. Very cool. Uh, so uh, Jim Brewer uh, and I met. Uh, strangely enough, we were already Facebook friends. We realized after our actual meeting point, which... Uh, our buddy Dustin Price, the exclusive barbershop. I think we can name drop him now. He's he's he's, he's open to it. He's doing his thing. Yeah. Um, so I was in buying some product. Uh, Jim was in getting his hair cut, and we just kind of started rapping a little bit. And if you've been listening to the podcast, especially the last you know ten episodes or so, it's really taken on this this trajectory of kind of motivating, inspiring, um, you know, learning about life, learning about all the things that we as as humans can accomplish and. A lot of the times, the excuses that we give ourselves for not being able to do something. Um, And Jim struck me as a guy because uh, you are owner of Momentum Sport Fitness. Is that? Yes, co owner. Co owner of Momentum Sport Fitness here in uh, the beautiful city of Eau Claire. And, you know, I just, I kind of started thinking about all the things that not only you get to to witness um, at that facility, but the lives that you have an impact on that you get to see change. And, and a point that you brought up as uh, before we started recording here was how that 
in turn helps you grow and helps you change and helps you learn as you're kind of a part of this whole process. So I thought, what a better way to have, you know, this podcast continue on the path that it's on than to, to have Brewer in and, and kind of just talk about motivation and health and fitness and, you know, mental health and, and, um, and kind of moving our lives in the direction that we want them to go. And I think that you, you have some keen insight on that. So after that introduction, thank you for, uh, for coming down to the, to the lab here. Yeah. Thank you for having me. No, it's, um, it'd be fun. Um, like we kind of talked about before the show, life is very strange and it can hand you kind of unexpected cards. Um, podcast listeners, you know, I went through the the big change in my life with uh, being like over radio back in February of this year, 2019. And it was always like one of those things like, like shit was chaotic in my life, like throughout those 20 years I was in radio, things would happen, you know, deaths would happen. You know, I, I didn't have any foresight into relationships or being maybe even generally a good human being at some points. But the one consistent thing I always had was my career. It was always there. I always had it, um, you know, Mondays through Fridays, weekend events. It was all, it was the constant in my life. It was something I never concerned myself with. I was never really an active, Ooh, I'm in radio. Cause I'm going to I'm going to work in, you know, a small market, then I'm going to work to a medium market, then I'm going to work in a big market. I was just like content having the career that I had and was able to do some really amazing things in there, but what I think it did is it really left me feel kind of lazy and comfortable in all aspects of my life because I'm like, well, at least, you know, if this fails, at least I got radio. You know, if this relationship fails, at least I got radio. Being let go and having to kind of reinvent, you know, myself is, is one of the things that I think people get dealt a lot and have to try to find some sort of path and try to find some sort of way to to get through it. Some people can't overcome those kind of obstacles. You know, some people can adjust and, and work their way through it. But a lot of this stuff ties into, you know, mental health. It ties into physical health because I think there's a, a clear and obvious tie into that. Um, but the one thing I want to start off with you on is is how did you end up in the in the field of fitness, you know, was what was what's kind of your backstory into where you are 2019 sure so i came to eau claire in 2007 Mm -hmm. and i went to school at uwc i got a degree in physical education and the route of doing physical education i started to coach so i started to coach uh, high school and middle school Uh, wrestling and football Mm -hmm. were my two sports that i played in i played football in college i wrestled since i was a little kid so i was just kind of following those tracks and i was learning early on um kind of I, you know, the squeaky wheel gets the grease. So I knew I want to be a teacher. Okay. I got to end up in a school somewhere. Mm. Let's coach football. Okay. I'm still going to school. I'm coaching football after I got done playing, I ended up building relationships there. And then I started to get into training. I've always been, um, physically active, mm. you know, kind of my whole life worked out or had a labor job in the summertime. And I was getting into fitness in 2007 as an intern. From there, I would start to write programs for friends. I was following a sport performance program for football, and I kind of had a niche for it. Um, I then got my first foot in the door. I was a water aerobics instructor, so three days a week, 6 a.m., yep. Uh, (laughs) And I knew I kind of, and I don't want to toot my own horn, but I kind of had it. When I started water aerobics class, I had like four or five women who'd come, and they'd show up daily. And I said, bring your friends, bring your friends. Before you know it, I'd have like 35 women in this pool, and I'd be like, holy cow. They're showing up and they're signing up for memberships. I'm like, oh, this is awesome. Mm -hmm. Well, that eventually, you know, you get to the point where you're kind of like, all right, kind of getting out of teaching water aerobics. I actually changed my major to FIED um, to teach. And so I was in the gym atmosphere. I was working. I was kind of doing the FIED thing. And then I started to get into personal training and I was training athletes. And then that was awesome. That's where I started to. So I basically, after college, I had three jobs. I was coaching football. I was working as a part-time strength and conditioning coach for a summer camp in Chippewa Falls. And then I was working Menards like every, like many of the fine people of Eau Claire. Yeah. So I was working Menards and eventually the Menards job left. I was coaching and training. And then I ended up getting into just training and it started to become where I was training the parents of these kids. Wow. And that's where I started to build retention. When you get the people who sign up with you and then you are their point person for fitness and you guide them, you lead them, Mm -hmm. you learn from them just as much as they're learning from you and the snowball continues. And, uh, gosh, I got into, I graduated college and about 13 months after graduating college, I, every dime I had saved up, I invested into buying my half of momentum fitness. Mm -hmm. 
So I partnered with a wonderful woman, a colleague and trainer, Jackie Barstead, and her and I co-own Momentum, and we have since 2013. So when you have a chance to uh, to kind of go through all of those different segments of of fitness and athletics uh, and education, you know, what are some of the key things? Because very few people can you know, go through that kind of that program. They, there's obviously there's gym teachers at every school, but it was kind of always around you. You know, it's kind of always one of those things that uh, was in your life. For me, I, I, I played sports as a, as a child. I, I did the, the three sport athlete thing in high school and then and my life kind of fell off the rails when I got into radio. So, um, but for you to go in and be able to take that knowledge and share it with other people, you know, to share it and help them achieve their goals, you know, what, what kind of personal, you know, satisfaction do you take in, in being able to help transform somebody's life? Oh, that's the piece. That's the part of the job that doesn't make it a job. Mm -hmm. Um, it really gives you kind of an emotional high when you watch somebody accomplish something they haven't accomplished. And we were talking about earlier when you were done with radio Mm -hmm. February, things were kind of, you know, at a low, right. Yeah. And you look at it and it's like, well, are they going to, they're not going to get any lower. What can I do? I only got one other direction I can go. So when people come and see me, a lot of times they're going through kind of a similar pain point. They have a problem. Mm-hmm. All right. And it's usually something it could be aesthetically. They don't like the way they look. Um, they could be chasing around their kids and they're out of breath. They don't like the way they feel. And it's a kind of a snowball effect of other things that have in their past that have kind of gotten to that point. So for us, it's really to sit down, dial in what is it that is our problem, and then helping them envision or building a path to solve that problem. It can be general weight loss. It can be performance-based. We have people who are training for performance, but nine times out of 10, people coming in are looking to achieve something in the realm of fitness. And fitness falls into the lifestyle yeah. you're talking about. You mm-hmm. were like, I got to reinvent myself in a way. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to incorporate fitness because maybe you weren't before. Now you're starting to work out. You're starting to run. You're feeling better. Mm-hmm. You're feeling accomplished. You're learning, I can do this shit. I can, I can, and I am. And then as you start to do that, other pieces of your life become easier where you're able to accomplish more. If I, I, I tell people all the time, if you are finding yourself feeling better through fitness, then fitness, I mean exercise, right? I, I bet you're going to find yourself feeling better by eating a little bit better. So let's talk about that. And then we go into the next realm of um, how's your sleep patterns, you mm-hmm. know? And we still just start to look at these little things. I mean, one thing that we try to do is just a little at a time. If you take off too big of a bite, you're going to learn it's hard to chew it all and swallow it all. A little at a time. Fix one thing. Okay, now that's working. Now you've done that a few times. It's now a habit. Fix another thing. Okay, you got this habit. Now you got another habit. And they're all positive habit, habits. Mm-hmm. And they're building blocks into the direction of your goal. And that's when it happens. That's the light bulb moment. That's when somebody comes in, follows the path that we have laid out together, accomplishes that goal, and then they say, I can do this with not just fitness. Mm-hmm. I'm going to do this at work. I'm going to do this at, with my personal life, my relationships, with my friends, family. And then they start to just become, they reinvent themselves. They become, a, they enjoy themselves more. They find that if they are able to enjoy themselves more, other people are starting to enjoy them more mm-hmm. and their relationship quality goes up. So, yeah, uh, to be honest with you, that's the piece of the job that doesn't make it a job at all. It makes it a lot of fun and inspiring on our end too because we're like wow we can do this it's like magic there was a, a moment a couple of weeks ago and, and i'd been going through i mean I, i've been kind of a workout guy uh for many years but it's always been like an, an influx thing like it, it, when it was part of my routine you know i would obviously make the no, you know, notice that it would man you know i feel better i feel more confident it, it does help me and in, in not just the, the the physical attributes of it but mental clarity and all the the benefits that come along with taking that into your career or taking it into a relationship where you just where if you overall feel better you're kind of going to accomplish things more in every other aspect as you mentioned but as i've been going through this kind of next phase of life and this next kind of transformation of my own and the journey that i'm on you know, if you walk out in public, and I mentioned this on a, on a previous episode, um, I think two back, when you walk out into kind of just the world, if you start becoming a little more self-aware of, of the world that's around you, um, obviously of your own presence and, and where you are, but if you look around a little bit and you can, you start to notice a lot of sadness that, that is, is out there and a lot of broken, just people that, that have, that give you a vibe that they're broken, that 
there's something missing. And if they added one thing into their life, it could lead into a whole bunch more uh, abundance in, in many other areas. So for me, uh, what I, the conclusion I kind of drew from that is something that I've been implementing in my own life is, is fixing the physical part of it, getting up early, even if it's not your thing. That was you know, one of the biggest challenges for me was, was implementing that morning routine in an ungodly hour. You know, not because it's, you know, because I like to brag and boast about it or, you know, and, and, and I'll put it up on, on Instagram and just to be like, like, this is legit stupid. Like, and I, I'll call myself out and be like, this is dumb. It's dumb to be up at 3.30 in the morning. But what it does for me is it starts my day off. I'm able to get in meditation. I'm able to get in a good workout, you know, it, whether it's running, whether it's running and lifting, a combination of a whole bunch of different things. And by the time, like, I'm ready to go for the day, like, showered, cleaned up, not shaved because you know, I got to leave this beauty on here. Oh, yeah. But, like, I feel like I, I've done so much already. Like, nothing later on in the day could derail how my day is going to go. And so when you're out in it and you're looking at, you know, kind of how this obesity and kind of a mental health issues are really dragging like a lot of society down into a place where you're like, man, I just, I, I wish I could go up and you, and you can't. I mean, you, you please don't go up to somebody in, at Walmart and be like, hey, you know, let's, let's go hit the gym. But you want to find a way to kind of pass along to them. Like, and if you, if you just started doing this. You know, if you take those baby steps that you talk about, take those little bites that you talked about, um, in some cases, less bites, um, and just start moving in a, in a direction that you start to get your blood flowing a little bit better. And then, you know, the neurons in your brain start to fire a little bit faster than they have. And, and you, you find yourself some mental clarity. Amazing things can happen. And what I would, this podcast has really started to, to try to push out is that, there's nothing that we can't accomplish if we stop telling ourselves no. And I imagine, you know, in, in your field, you get people that come in and, and maybe are motivated for that day. And yeah, I'm going to do this. And here's my goals. And then as soon as the first challenge, the, the first fall, the first, you know, couldn't lift that or couldn't run that far, people give up. They just give up. Like, that's too hard. It was too uncomfortable. I'm done. And then they're back to being, you know, kind of sedentary and, and back in the routine. What, what are some keys that you can pass along to people about getting over that first that first zone that you're in that's super uncomfortable and your body's everything in your body's going fuck this you don't want to be here get back on the couch this isn't a place that you belong you know everybody else can belong here but not you what what are some uh, tools that you guys have in your arsenal to kind of get people that that kind of pull through that, you know, come on over here. It's going to be fine once you get past this point. Sure. Sure. So I like using, uh, I'm going to use Jackie's name job. Jackie always says, use little kid gloves, be mm -hmm. gentle with them. They're your little China doll. When they walk in They're they're fragile. Yeah. So basically, um, going through a client journey, let's start from day one. What we'd like to do is if you came in the door, there's a high likelihood. Now you're curious, you're warmer to the idea of, I can do this. I'm going to go in and talk to these guys. So mm -hmm. our first initial sit down is, is exactly that. We sit down and we talk and we do assessments and uh, two assessments. One is an in-body assessment, which is a body composition machine that measures skeletal muscle mass, um, body fat percentage, overall weight, and kind of gives us an idea of where they're at. And it's that tangible data. Day one, we know kind of where we're at because if it's something aesthetic, I'm, I'm in, under the assumption, maybe gaining some muscle, burning fat, right? Mm -hmm. I think that's, I think everyone would be nodding yes if yeah. they heard that. Okay, now we have that tangible data. From there, the last thing we want to do, our rule number one with all of our coaches, and we are very fortunate to have amazing coaches, mm -hmm. is do no harm. So if you came in a fully functional person with breath in your lungs and joints that move, we want you to leave with that same exact thing going on. Right. So. The mobility assessment, we go on the floor, and this is kind of that one-on-one -on -one personal touch. We're going to take you on the floor, and we're going to check joints, basically. Wrists, mm -hmm. elbows, shoulders, hips, knees, ankles, and then we're going to learn a little bit about exercise history. So I'd start by asking you, what do you do currently? Let me learn. Where is your baseline? Where are you at? Mm -hmm. Some people come in. They'd be like, I've been a member of Globo Gym for five years. I've used my membership five times. I'm like, wow, you're paying a lot per. Really enjoy doing this because the next thing is we want to make this enjoyable. So we check, we make sure with the mobility assessment, so going through to make sure that there's no pain associated with general movement. So we're not going to throw you in and do a workout. That's not our goal yet. We're mm -hmm. going to get to that point. We're going to just kind of, we're dating right now. We're just getting to know each other. I'm finding out a little bit about you. Right. We're going to do the mobility assessment and then we're going to sit down. We might do a little light workout, maybe on one of our 
piece of equipment that you maybe have used or maybe one you haven't used. It could be a rowing machine. Not many people have ever used that. A skier, a bike, whatever. We're going to do a little workout, test the water a little bit, and talk a little bit more about what exactly is the problem. Mm -hmm. And it comes down to finding out why you walked in the door. A lot of people walk in the door. I'm looking at gyms. Okay, that's great. So you decided to stop him because you're looking at gyms. Why are you looking at gyms? Like, like, are you shopping for cars? Why are you shopping for cars? Because I, mine is a broken transmission. Okay, that's the problem. Yeah. Why are you coming into my gym at this point? Why did you reach out to me? You know, we're having this conversation. And then we find out exactly. I want to know the reason why. Um, I had a gentleman sign up. Um, it was June. Great guy. Said he got out of the pool. Or not pool. It was the lake. He couldn't get into the boat. And when he did, he felt like a whale. Quote, quote unquote and I said okay I go you just didn't like the way you felt we felt like that he goes no I felt horrible I felt like shit I'm mm -hmm. like all right well what if I told you with this program we'll set a goal here and it's to lose five pounds six weeks something simple right. something attainable right mm -hmm. it needs to be attainable and use something we can't accomplish and as a coach that's what we do we don't want to set these goals you know we're going to go all the way it's like you in your first year you want 20,000 subscribers to your podcast like right no let's we'll set a goal that's attainable mm -hmm. And then we start to go. And then with that question, now I went off on a tangent, but you're going to then talk to me. I'm going to go out of this schedule. I'm going to show you a schedule. Show me times that you can come to the gym three days a week. And you're going to show me those times. And I'm going to be like, in order to make this change, you have to commit to me. You're going to show up to this place. Mm -hmm. No matter how much you hate it, no matter how much it sucks, because I promise it will get better. All right, it's my guarantee. It will get better. I promise you after six weeks, if you show up three days a week, you're 18 workouts in, you're going to feel better every single time. If you don't show up, now we're to that, that low point again. So what we do is we do have systems in place that help hold people accountable. We have a retention system to keep you coming in. All right, We want to know where you are. So it's less of a signing up, forget about you mentality. It's, it's a goals-based business. I want you... To be my next success story. Mm -hmm. So, you know, when we talk marketing or how do we bring people in the gym, it comes down to I want to have somebody come in and have success, be a raving fan, and then I'm going to tell their story. And I'm going to put that out there on social media or word of mouth, wherever it is. And then I'm going to do that again to the next person. And that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to tell a story, I'm going to get results, and I'm going to do it again. And I'm just going to keep cycling that. And as many people as I can help change that have problems, it's just going to keep growing in that positive direction that we're talking about, just building blocks. Right. Every person I help, every person I, as in we, my team, all of our coaches, momentum, the community of people, because when somebody walks into class for the first time, it's awesome having another member go up to them and be like, hi, I'm Diane. It's great to meet you. Welcome to 9 a.m. This is over here. Come here. Let me show you right. this. And then you get that friendship base. And when that starts to happen, that's uh that's that's honestly the magic. And that's what people talk about when you when you're referring to the micro gym, you'll hear community, community, community. Right. It's kind of overused. It's kind of but what is it? I go, it's somebody making a friend with somebody they didn't know existed until they came in here. And that person had their back, and that was a reason they kept coming. And that's the reason that their ten, five pound weight loss after six weeks turned into a twenty five pound weight loss after six months. And turn into a hundred pound weight loss after a year, and that's what we want to have. That happens honestly organically. It's human nature. People want to be around people. If you get enough like minded people in one area mm. with positive energy, it just starts to snowball. You know, and you've seen and probably heard of the reverse effect: a toxic environment that can do the exact opposite. So, keeping that positive atmosphere. Um, as far as the low points, people. That's it. That's life. Yep. I mean, you're just talking. I mean, you start up, and life has some great things. It has birth and family. It also has death and destruction that can happen. Yep. And you know, you don't want either of that to happen, but it's part of life. So, um, on the fitness side, when somebody gets in a rut, um, nutrition's off. Maybe holidays are coming up, so we're doing a lot of stuff right now to get set up for November, December, because now we have travel. We have eating habits that are going to be mm -hmm. skewed workouts are going to be a little skewed this summer was one of our lowest in retention main reason my members didn't get a spring really right no, <laughs> no we, right? we got a super dose of winter there in we february went, and march we went, so. boom hit the ground yeah. running so it was uh for us it was keeping people engaged right and remembering 
what's important now? What are your goals? Remember this, you know, and keeping them on track. I think what we were talking about with you getting up early, hmm. you were getting up and you were winning the day. You were setting the tone for your whole entire day. Yep. And it required you as a person to say, I'm going to get up at 3 o'clock in the morning because nothing can disrupt me at 3.30, 4 o'clock in the morning. I'll tell you right now, my 5 a.m. classes are my busiest. Hmm. Those are the people that get up. It's a habit. It's year-round. Summertime, wintertime, below zero, 80 degrees, they're out. They're, they're right at 5 a.m. It's their time. Yeah. So you're winning the day. You're setting the tone for your day. You know, um, I was guilty early on by waking up 30 minutes before I had to, before I had to be somewhere. And I'd rush in, and that would be my tone. I'm rushed all day, yep. and I'd get nothing done. Set your alarm 30 minutes early. That was one of our pieces we start people with. If you're getting upset 30 minutes early, Sundays might be the best time to do your meal prep. If nutrition is something we're really trying to talk to them about, educate them on. So yeah, Accountability, it, the one word that you, you mentioned in there, and I think is, is, is such a huge and vital part of everything that we're talking about so far. And having, a, having people behind you to, to keep you accountable, um, to encourage you to be accountable, I think that that's a huge part of it. I think the biggest part of it is going into the mirror and people that come to it to your gym or people that go to a gym or people that, that make the decision to start a program or even not even to start a program, just to have that conversation with themselves and say, shit, like I got to like figure things out. Like I've reached a point, whether that's a low, um, whether some of the items that we talked about with us playing with my kids and I ran out of breath or I was going to go and do this, but I was unable to, you know, whether physically or mentally and you get in front of that mirror or you just kind of stand up and, and look inwardly and you make that choice. Like, okay, I gotta I gotta get in the car or I have to walk to the some place and, and start to find some direction. I don't know where that direction is. I'm not sure how to do it or how to you know get to where I feel like I should be. But that's the first step of accountability is you've taken some responsibility for whatever has happened, how whatever got you to that point where you're making the decision that you need to make change and you're being accountable to yourself for okay now it's time to take care of me and then to go in and have a support team behind you have plans laid out um, but the biggest thing for me and what I've tried to pass along to other people is the more self-accountable you can be the more you get after yourself and that can start with one workout you can go in and it can suck because a lot of times they suck you know, a lot, most people don't go to the gym and go, yeah, I can't wait to be in pain and hurt and be in my uncomfortable zone. But when you get done with that and you go, damn, that I did that. And all of a sudden you say, when you start to want more and then you get like verbally upset with yourself, if you miss something, if you wake up late, you're like, damn it. And then you like double time and you go after a little bit harder. Now you're starting to really develop this self-accountability and that can, that really is, I think, the secret sauce in accomplishing not just your physical goals or you know business goals. If you can start to just own it and you know call yourself out on your own bullshit, man, there's there's not many things that stand in your way when you're in control of your accountability. Oh, absolutely. I think you know playing off of that, you're one workout away, you're right? One workout away from feeling sexier about the way you look you're one workout away and you, you earn that 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 release of endorphins that energy that you feel when you do exercise you can't get that any other way it mm -hmm. takes hard work you, no one's going to give it to you You can't go to the store and buy it you got to show up and you got to put in the work and it's it is it needs to be held on you and we we do have you know that we have our success stories and we could talk all day but i do have the stories of the people who we have lost throughout yeah. the years and those aren't the fun ones and you kind of look at it and you reflect on it. And that's honestly been the biggest learning curve for myself and my, our team at Momentum is, you know, how do we keep them going? And, you know, it could be as simple as, you know, if we took them and they lost that five pounds in their first six weeks, they're feeling good. Their muscle mass is up. Their body fat's down. They were coming in. And now we've lost them. Where'd they go? And now it's on us. It's on me. Because what didn't I do is I didn't take that next, didn't help you learn that next next challenge mm -hmm. so one of the things that we try and do is okay we're going to help you do a short-term goal and we're also going to have an idea of you when you come in what's a long-term goal mm -hmm. you know what do you see what can we do in six weeks if i tell you in six weeks we can lose five pounds um in two percent body fat something like that maybe put on a little muscle and you're going to work out you're going to feel better 
what happens after that? And that's the idea that we have to establish together. Okay, what's another one? Well, I'd like to do, let's do, you've been running around, do the Eau Claire Marathon. Mm. Okay, yeah, I'm going to ask you, okay, the, the marathon, that's a big one. What about a half? Oh, okay. Because now I'm thinking, a trainer's perspective, I want you to do a version of a run right. before we say, hey, we're going to go do 26.2, which, you know, you absolutely positively can. Yeah. Um, but it's, it's definitely going to be one of those things where what's a smarter approach? You know, are you going to maybe get injured doing 26.2 right away? Maybe let's talk about where we're currently at. So basically we want to learn your current state. We want to then talk about where you envision, where we can get you to, and then where your ultimate dreams come true. Where could this lead us? You know, and um, it could be CrossFit competitions. You right. know, we've had um, this weekend, actually, we are hosting the Chippewa Valley Games. Nice. This is our second year of the Chippewa Valley Games, and it is a team competition where we have all levels. So we have our elite RX competitors. This is cash prize money for them. Then we have our scaled athletes. And these are the ones who maybe have just got into fitness within the last six months to even three years. But they enjoy the atmosphere. They enjoy the energy. They're out on the floor. They get the butterflies in their stomach and everything. Right. And then we also have the intermediate, which is our middle ground. The people that aren't quite there either on the strength or the skill set as the RX, but they're still, they've been in cross for long enough. They've hit some very big milestones and now they're in that intermediate. But this weekend we have 75 teams coming. Out of those 75 teams, over half are scaled athletes, which are just, I like to say everyday people. All of them are everyday people. But mm -hmm. these ones just maybe have just hit that first weight loss goal. You know, they're feeling better in their skin and they're, they're starting to really starting to, in a way, flourish. Yeah. And those are the ones that have continued to progress their goal. They didn't just lose five pounds and leave. You know, we like to have a little bit longer buy-in with people. We want to be sure like, hey, like I said, this is a date. This is a relationship. Are we, or is this a quick one night hookup? Hit it and quit it. <laughs> you know, am I going to not see you in six weeks? Which we've had. We've had right. people sign up six weeks, get fucking amazing results didn't sign up. Something was in their way. And it may have been, Hey, I was just looking for a quick fix, man. Right. Thank you. I'm going to, and I, I know for us, we're like, yeah, that's awesome. Take it. Just in time for the holiday dating season. Exactly. <laughs> right. Just in time for the holiday dating season. Who wants season. to go through Christmas country, lights? Yeah, country fest is in six weeks. Yeah. You got to give me yeah. a pee jack. But, um, when we get them coming, but again, we, we were some best of luck then and we want them to continue. But if it doesn't work, they know they're always welcome back and that's kind of thing. But for anybody new coming on board, it's saying, all right, where's a short-term goal we can get? And then you start to compile those short-term goals. All of a sudden, before you know it's a long-term goal, and you've you're you're a different person at mm -hmm. that point. Tell me about the you know we talked about the elite athletes, you know the the guys and gals that are that are up there um, on the CrossFit scale or, or overall general health and fitness. And you've obviously been witness to those who have come in at that beginner level, that first time in the gym, and then worked their way up hard work, dedication, blood, sweat, tears, and now are at that level. What do you think is, almost, I'll, I'll try to narrow it down to one, but what is like one of the biggest things that you get to a point and all of a sudden this is just who you are. This is just part of your life. You know, there's not a competition. There's not a marathon. There's not a finish line. Fitness, at some cases, extreme fitness, in some cases, like stupid extreme fitness is just, this is just who I am as a person. I, I will do seven days a week. I don't take days off. What is one of the, the secrets to becoming one of those people? What is one of the biggest things that you say, okay, that person's going to be elite? Yeah. One word, consistency. Yeah, It's the ones who have shown up. They've put in the work. They've listened to the coaches. They eat right and it's and sometimes they may have just been doing it longer you know yeah. um when we i look at the reason and we're talking about people continuing on but what's the you know i sit back and go, what are the reasons people quit right why why quit you just start in february you're going if you were to quit well, i want to know why you quit okay right. and we have a few reasons one is they lose interest mm -hmm. okay and that's on us because we gotta be sure hey if they lost 10 pounds let's see if we can get them to lose five more let's see if we can get them to their ideal body weight which that's what we're talking about when you become in elite crossfitter there's a likelihood you're at your ideal body weight mm -hmm. okay you're move you're a good mover you can do pull-ups you can lift weights that are your body weight or more and um 
that's kind of our goal when somebody comes in, if it is weight loss reasons, it is to get them to their ideal body weight because then they're going to move better in their skin. If they're moving better in their skin, their athleticism is going to improve. Mm -hmm. um, the elite, I would say elite, but if we're talking about the CrossFit competitor per se on the higher scale, chances are they've just been doing it longer. Right. And that's the, the honest answer. And I've, I've keeping things in perspective for your newbies, the ones coming in and letting them know. And I hear it all the time. I heard today we had rope climbs today in the workouts. So I said, I wasn't going to come in because you have rope climbs. And I go, yeah, they're very challenging. Um, tell me, have you ever tried a rope climb? <laughs> and they said, no. And I'm like, fourth well, grade, fourth grade rope climb. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. It's fourth grade. Yeah. It was yeah, Mr. Johnson's fight class. Yep. And he said, back, you're like, well, okay, let's talk about it. Have you ever hung from the rope? No. Okay. Hang from the rope. Oh, I can do that. Okay. These are called King Kongs. You imagine you just kind of lower yourself yep. down. Oh, I can do that. And I'm like, so I'm not showing you, I'm not going to have you come in there and I'm going to have you show you the things you can't do. Right. I'm going to show you all the things you can do. And that's honestly, when somebody comes into the gym, especially in momentum or CrossFit in general has that negative stigma. Yep. It's like, all right, you need to understand this is where you're at and this is where we're going to go. That's a rope climb. That may not happen your first day in the gym and understand that it shouldn't. Right. But maybe in six months, maybe after we get this five, 10 pounds off your body, that's going to start happening. But hey, you should know and be aware of that's, oh, that's how they use their feet. Oh, my substitution is going to be I'm hanging from the pull up bar for 10 seconds to work my grip and then I'm going to do some ab work or I'm going to do ring rows and build my back strength. Mm. Everything is scalable and modifiable with what we do. You just got to keep showing up and keep in perspective. I've heard, I, and you want to talk sometimes with those elite athletes, that's the problem. You want to tell me why somebody who comes in with all these tools in their arsenal quit when you're looking at them like, man, they got it together. They're doing the rope climbs and everything else because they can't take a slice of humble pie sometimes. Right. Mm -hmm. You have to have humility. You know, you have to be able to understand, hey, yeah, some people are better than you at some things. Go back to work. Yeah. They've outworked your ass. Exactly. Straight up. That is so. That is so true in, in in a lot of aspects of life. Is when you get to a point, and I think you can look at this from all levels of, of if we use fitness as the example, but think of this in all realms of of life. You know, the beginners look at the intermediates and like, oh man, that I can't do that. The intermediates look at the experts and say, oh no, I I can't do that. And the immediate reaction of a lot of people, not everybody, but a lot of people, is the word can't. I can't do that. I can't climb rope. I can't do that. I can't, I can't make that phone call. I can't, you know, ask this person for, for help or, you know, I got, I got this really good business idea. I just, I, but I can't, can't is like the, the old standby that's like right behind you. Yeah. Like, you know, it's cool. Like if you don't do it, like you can just kick back and not have to worry about it anymore. It's, if you look at them with a, a you kind of alter your vision on who's above you and who is at a different level. And take a look at all the intangibles that are out there. They've been doing it longer, you know, that maybe, you know, obesity or, or being overweight or being unhealthy, that just wasn't, they always had some level of fitness in that. So they automatically kind of have that, that advantage. But all it says is that it, it can be done. Matter of fact, it can, you can go from beginner to intermediate, intermediate to expert, you know, in business, you can go from, you know, idea to, you know, implementing it to entrepreneur to, you know, business owner to CEO, you, know, you, you can you can do all these things, uh, which kind of leads me into the the mental challenges that a lot of us go through in the fitness world. I think in in entrepreneurship, in a lot of facets, in relationships, is we're really afraid. Like we 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 kind of tend to live in this fearful zone of taking a step out of being uncomfortable. When you start, your heart starts to palpitate a little bit faster, and you your breathing gets all jacked up because you're like, oh my gosh, I have to, I have to have this conversation or, oh man, I, you know what I have to do in the morning is I have to go and fucking see Brewer and he's gonna make me climb that damn rope, you know, and you get so, you just freak yourself out over it. You don't even try it. You don't, you don't take that step instead of just going, yeah, it's gonna suck, which has become a mantra on this podcast. Like, like, guess what? Things are gonna suck. And if you start kind of doing the sucky things and then you get them done, you're like, yeah. I guess if that ever comes up again, I can say, well, I've done that. I've, I got to the rope climb. I, you know, I did King Kong's. Now I'm going to take the step up and I'm going to climb the rope. That sucked, but I did it. You know, I'm not going to make that phone call to this, you know, investor. I did it. You, if you can just 
push yourself through fear, you know, being scared of yourself, you know, letting your brain control your brain, which is the weirdest, you know, when you conceptually think about it, like, wait, I'm in control of my brain. A lot of times your brain is in control of you. You know, your brain is in control of your body. And if your brain says, I don't want to do one more push up, I don't want to run that. And I don't want to run an extra mile. And you start to make excuses for yourself. I, on my journey, I do it all the time. And I, and I then hold myself accountable this morning. I was out, I'm like, I'm going to do five miles. And I got to like four and I was like, God, if I take a left here, like I can be home in like a quarter of a mile. Simple. No Done. one's going to know. Nope. You know, it's, you know, I could get an extra 15 minutes to get ready. Um, you know, I had a bunch of uh, this podcast, obviously, to record today. And I had another meeting this morning. Start telling yourself that. Oh, man. And then I said, I swear to God, if you turn and go towards home, I'm going to kick your ass. And like, I'm having this conversation in my head. And I didn't. I ran. I put that extra mile in because that's what I had set for myself for this yeah. morning. You're only cheating yourself. The thing you said can't. Can't really means don't want to. Right. Exactly. At the end of the day. Yeah. I mean, yeah, and you get that you fast it. It's like you don't want to be, you know, words of affirmation, sit there and positive self talk. Sometimes you can do. You got to tell yourself, listen to your fuck face. Yeah, go. What are you What are you doing right now? You know, um, we I, there's a Ben Bergeron has a book, Chasing Excellence. Mm -hmm. uh, highly recommend it. But he talks about um, what's the most important thing I can do today to maximize my potential. Okay, and that's for a lot of people if they're working towards something they need to keep that in perspective of okay yeah am i going to get a rope climbing day? no but damn it i'm gonna do some king kongs right you know and that's that's just how it's gonna be and then i'm gonna move on and don't compare yourself to the other people right. because guess what At the, no one you're your own biggest critic mm -hmm. right and when you're having those battles like you're run this morning you're telling yourself oh, i should go back because and now you're giving yourself excuses mm -hmm. all right and some people will start to believe their own excuses just like they'll believe why they can't or why they shouldn't and they start to lie to themselves it's the same falseness as having delusions like oh yeah i got this gym membership and i sat down with jim and he took me through this six week plan that we have and he drew this up this vision it's so great i'm gonna get such good results monday morning i'm starting and i don't show up yeah and I'm going to keep telling myself, no, no, Jim said I can't, but I'm not going to show up. But like, but like, the number one thing we talked about was you coming in three days a week mm -hmm. and I have not seen you yet. Where are you? And I'm, of course, we have these people on the radar, yeah. you know, and it's, it, we're, we're messaging, we're, we're texting and we're like, Hey, what's going on? Um, we know where they are. And if we, that's, that's, if they're not coming in, if they're coming in, we're following up. Hey, how's the program going? Um, what are you learning? What's your favorite pieces? What's some pieces? What, how can I help you? You know, and some people are just like, no, I'm loving it. I'm just going to keep doing what I'm doing. And we have a thing. When you come into the gym, it's actually, um, I've, I've got copied it from another gym. But when you're walking out, there's a big three letters, a three words, sorry, that are above. It says, keep showing up, period. That, I mean, just got to keep showing up. Yeah. And, it, and I understand some things happen. I missed the gym for two weeks. Yeah. Remember what we talked about? You're one workout away from feeling better. So what's your schedule look like this week? And sometimes for us, it's sitting down with people and saying, we got to do a time audit. Yep. You're in the, I'm going to quote Dr. Jay Lagardia on this one. Him and I have had this talk before about getting caught in the chaos. And I was really guilty of this when I first got into training because I honestly, when I bought into momentum, I had zero business owning a gym. All right. I was honestly <laughs> uh, uh, chasing my tail and I was very fortunate to be surrounded by some awesome people, mm. um, some awesome coaches, some awesome members and people have really mentored me and helped me out. But um, can you cause the chaos? It's as simple as if I start my day frantic, I bet you I'm going to end my day frantic. Right. Um, so teaching finding out what people, what's your schedule looking like? Well, this and this and this and trying to find holes in their day. Why do we have an hour of exercise built in? It's, an hour, it's three hours a week. I'm talking a three-day week, which is a basic program. I mean, our goal is to get them three days a week, starting to build a habit. We had one more. Now we're really four days a week of exercises, really going to get some serious results. And then letting them know, okay, we got to the state that you came in for. It took you, you know, maybe it's been 10 years of you living this unhealthy lifestyle of soda, smoking, and fast food. It's not going to, it's going to take us a little bit longer than six weeks right. to get you to where you know, Diane's at, it's mm -hmm. going to take a little bit, but I promise you, if you t stick to this route and keep showing up and you know, there's going to be valleys, you're going to yeah. hit some hard spots. You're going to find yourself having been in the gym for two weeks. Yeah, that happens. That happened to Diane too. She's in here. Her world didn't end. Yeah. Come back. 
time and priorities. Um, and I actually, uh, and I mentioned to you, uh, and I'll mention to the podcast in case you haven't uh, noticed yet. We, I started doing this thing on Monday mornings, uh, calling on Monday. It's it's part of my ninety five percent rule uh, that I've implemented in my life, which I'll I'll expand more on here in a little bit. But uh, my last one on Monday was about time and priorities and taking a look at how your day breaks down. And a lot of times we'll go through uh, the course of a day and not outside of like things that we know we need to be at. I know my kid needs to be at school at 8.05. I know I need to pick him up at da da If you have a job, I know that my lunch is here. I know I have a meeting. The things that are scheduled out, like you have kind of a ballpark idea. Even if you keep a, you know, you use your I calendar or you have a big one like we have upstairs. We got the big old Staples calendar that we write stuff down on. But if you actually look at how you manage your day and manage your time, whatever time you get up and you give yourself enough time to maybe have a cup of coffee, maybe take a quick shower, get teeth brushed, get the kids ready, get off to school, go to work. But then you kind of analyze the rest of your day and how much time you spend really wasting precious minutes, you know, in a, in a, in a, end all be all precious minutes because we get one shot at this whole thing you know we're kind of you know we're, we're playing the game and it, it has an end you know but if you start to look at your time and break it down into man you know i i went to the bathroom and i ended up on in there for 45 minutes scrolling on facebook you know yeah. I, didn't, I didn't even accomplish anything except i know what everybody else in my group of friends and their group of friends and shit that they shared and articles i read and memes that i've Man, okay, so 45 minutes. Okay. And then, you know, I, I went back out and I was I just kind of sat and I watched TV for like a half hour. What'd you watch? I don't know. Some show. Well, is it, was it good? Uh, it was okay. I was kind of watching the show and I was kind of on my phone and okay, cool. Well, then what'd you do? Well, then I just, you know, I'd, and you start to add all this time into, you know, this vault of like, man, I could really be doing something with this extra. I mean, if that's an hour and a half of time that you could be doing something else, whether it is going to, where you're supposed to be at the gym, going on a walk, going on a run, you know, focusing on maybe a, an idea or a business plan that you had, or you know, maybe it's you know some relationship things that you need to work on. You start utilizing that time a little bit better and prioritizing like what's important to me is Facebook, is what's going on, and not that I you know don't love reading what's going on in your life, but is is what is going on in my you know Facebook friend's life more important than my health, my kids, my relationship? And you go, well, no, not really. Okay, well, let's start to prioritize how our time lays out. And that kind of all fits into that. Well, I, I didn't make it to the gym. I don't, you know, I have, I got this big, I'm going to do it. I'm going to take it. And then uh, I don't have time. There's time. Time is there. And if you have to start, like Jim mentioned, getting up a half hour early, doing something stupid like me and getting up stupid early, you can find the time and your body will eventually figure it out. Okay, this is my clock. This is my schedule. If I get this, 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 and this done, before this time, phew, you can't stop me. I'm going to go own today. You know, it's amazing what you can do when you take your time and your priorities, combine them into one cohesive unit. Like you can, you can accomplish pretty much anything. Absolutely. Yeah. It, it, you hear, if you dive into it and think, think about that, you know, you mentioned that get up early. I had a client who had the problem with getting up early and they found an app on their phone where they had to get up and take a photo of their coffee maker. <laughs> I don't know what it's called. Have you heard of this? I, I, I don't know, but it's genius. It is genius. I wish it's I would have invented I'll, that. I'll have to call Andrew and find out, yeah. but I asked him, I'm like, yeah, you've been killing it with the 6 a.m. And I go, how are you doing with that? Because it just started. This is a guy who loved his sleep. He goes, I actually have the blank app. I forgot what it's called. And he goes, when in my phone alarm, it won't shut off until I walk upstairs and take a photo of my coffee maker. I go, <laughs> and I said to him, I was fucking genius. He goes, dude, I haven't missed a workout in like two months. He goes, because I'm up. What am I supposed to do? Get go back downstairs and crawl back into bed. Yeah. My coffee maker's running. I'm like, oh shit. By the time he gets, by the time his alarm goes off and he gets up and walks all the way upstairs, he's awake. There's no going back to bed at that point. It's the point of no return. Yeah. You know? So yeah, sometimes you got to get dirty, you know, and you got to, again, you got to quit lying to yourself. And that's the key. I that's, think that some people will get caught in the line of themselves. And it's like, Hey, you are allowing this to happen because you're in control. If yeah. it's, you know, it's not a situation that you've only been dealt with. You're not the only one there. Self, that self pity needs to stop. Let's go, buck up, buckaroo. Yeah, Here accountability, we go. accountability, accountability. And if you, if you make excuses for it, and it happens, people do it. But it, it, it's not a priority if you make excuses for it. If getting healthy, losing weight, being fit, uh, 
you know, starting a new business, whatever it is that this is my priority. I know I need to do this. And we'll use weight loss as an example. I know I need to lose weight. And to lose weight, I need to do two things. Eat better and move. Simple. If at any point you make an excuse for not doing one of those things outside of, you know, extreme measures, you know, if there's a death in the family or, you know, there's a sense of an urgency to it, even then, if that's not something you go and accomplish, if you don't, oh, it's, hang on, I'm running a bit late. I'm going to go through a drive through instead of, you know, going home and, I, you know, I did all that meal prep on Sunday, but man, I just, I, I, I'm just going to run through the drive through You just, <clears throat> you made an excuse <clears throat> and you've just proven that that really isn't a priority to you. Once it's a priority, those excuses tend to melt themselves away because you're like, no, this my priority is to to get a workout in today, and I'm going to get it done. Mm -hmm. Nothing's going to stop that. And now all of a sudden, you have that time. And it, it it's one like giant cohesive ball that all just melds itself together once you kind of get it figured out and you say, I'm going to do this, and then not not let anything get in your way of it. Yeah. No. Well, that's well said. It does come down to that your ability to honestly make a decision, make a choice and do it. Um, you mentioned about the nutrition and I think that is another piece that, yeah. um, a lot of people that we talk to need the most guidance with, um, coming in, especially because those are the habits that we're trying to correct. And it's also the chemicals we're trying to balance back out. Like if you're coming in and you've been eating poorly, your body's adjusted to the poor eating. So if you start to eat healthy, it's going to, for the first few weeks or a week you're going to be craving that poor food and teaching them this is why it's important we take the time and educate you on this and when we get into those habits we usually start with simple stuff like drinking more water mm -hmm. um, we usually take it for granted we're composed of water our body's 70 percent water you should be drinking water so we start with that and then from there we start to talk about quality of food um, where is the food coming from can we trace it back to its lineage did it have a face and a soul? You know, <laughs> if you're a meat eater, of course. Right. If you're vegan, then carnivore. Yeah, 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 exactly. You're carnivore. Otherwise, what part of the dirt did it come from? Right. Does Old McDonald have it on his farm somewhere, or was it built uh, in a factory or manufactured mm -hmm. yeah. somewhere? So we start with that, and then that's kind of the first little bit. Because if we fix those things, we're going to start seeing weight melt off yeah. because they changed a few things in their eating habits, and then we eventually start to evolve that further into fine tuning. And that's where we start to calculate the macronutrients yep. a little better. And there's where we now become accountable. You think it's hard showing up to the gym? Now we're going to talk, you know, and then we're, now we're talking about the next levels, basically looking at macronutrients and dialing in food. And in order to do that, you need to let the coach know what are you eating because mm -hmm. you need to let yourself know what you're eating. So logging that food. Right. You know, so we start people with MyFitnessPal. Mm -hmm. um, we have two very um, educated um, certified nutrition coaches at Momentum that have been, they're phenomenal. Um, they, they're who I go to for advice because I'm, I'm really more of a performance based and right. uh, more of the daily procedure stuff, but they definitely have a knack for putting that together. And they also give people ideas, um, with nutrition, but the, that once you start to fine tune, that's where it starts to really now we're talking, they know what percentage of calories are going in, right. what's going out, how much protein, you know, then we talk supplements at that point a little bit, but you know, early stages, it's the really simplest shit that we're trying to tell people this is all it takes. It's not hard. Drink more water. What are you trying to do? Are we off the soda pop? Yeah. Oh, okay. You know, you get somebody who's drinking four Mountain Dews a day. It's not saying, oh, no more Mountain Dew. It's hey, we're cutting it back down to three. Yeah, let's 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 knock one twenty ounce bottle off at <laughs> yeah, a time. One at a time. Uh, Aubrey so. Marcus uh, is uh, the founder of On It um, Supplement Company and uh, had a book out. It's called Own the Day, and I read that recently. And one of the great takeaways I got from that, um, and it really made me, from a nutritional standpoint, reevaluate the last thirty nine fucking years of my life. Sure. And that was, calories are not a real thing. They are not. If you if you look at your sandwich, it is not built of calories. Like there's not like calorie elves in a tree somewhere, knitting them all together and going like, ooh, there here's your here's your calories. You know, calories are what they're. If, it's what food burns in a, in a steel oven yep. at what temperature it burns at, um, or how long it takes to to burn. So, yep. it's a, it was a real like eye opening thing that kind of you know opened the floodgates into what macronutrients are and that it's you know if you're a, calorie counter and it's all about calories i think that's there's just all the shit that's been like pushed into our brain since 
we were born, you know, how important breakfast is and, and you know, calories and, and the, the FDA. And, you know, we've set these, here's the, the fucking food pyramid is yeah. a farce. Yeah, this, this like, conspir- the conspiracy theories behind this now. Yeah, it's oh, so yeah. wild. Government, but man. All you need to, like, understand is that calories, A, aren't real. And what's more important is the macronutrients, so the actual things that you're putting into your body, what are they? You know, what is protein? What is carbohydrates? What is sugar? What is, you know, all the the real things that are going in. And to understand that you could pro- you can have more calories if you're putting in, like, the good stuff. It will take you a long time to eat 2,000, you know, your daily allotted 2,000 calories that you need to have per day uh, in broccoli. That's a lot of broccoli, dude. Yeah, that ain't going to happen. And nobody wants to be around you if you have that much broccoli in you. But really understanding what is in the food that you're eating. You know, you talked about where where did it come from? You know, if you start to look at the labels on your food, which we all thought was such a huge step when the government said, no, you're going to put labels on the food so people know what they're eating. Very, yeah. And it was a huge step. So you have your calorie count on there if you're, if you're counting those. But you start to read like ingredients. Oh, yeah. And you go, I have no idea how to pronounce this. I'm not sure if that's going to be good going into my body at all. Yeah. Then you start getting into... You know, looking at macronutrients, putting the good things in your body, and it is, it is eye opening. And your the changes that your body goes through when it starts to get like actual good healthy food, you go, I didn't even know I could feel this way. Oh, and the urge to maybe have that one less Mountain Dew a day becomes a little bit easier when you start to realize, oh man, if I don't, if I put this in instead of this, if I feel my you know my body, my instrument, my tool with this instead of with this, man, I feel a lot better in all aspects of life. It's just the the nutrient part of it is just an amazing, yeah. such a key tool. Because a lot of people think, oh, if I I go I go to the gym and I work out and I either I do CrossFit or I run or I go and I lift heavy things and then I go and I you know put down a pizza and don't don't take pizza out of your diet, but yeah, understand wait, wait, wait. that it's not you know people work out just to eat. And the results are what the results are going to be, and yeah. they're not going to be as good. It's going to be flatlined. You, you can't out-train a bad diet, especially if somebody's coming in with a goal of losing, generally losing weight. Yeah. Like We really have to talk diet. That's the number mm-hmm. one thing. Um, and I had a client a while, a while ago, but he got, um, got torn bicep, um, unrelated to fitness. Mm-hmm. But he was following a very, very structured um, nutrition plan. Mm-hmm. He built, and he's an Excel spreadsheet, kind of a geek on that aspect and it was great and this was early stages before i was really in the my fitness pal and he got injured and what he did we did a body composition on the end body with him right and he didn't work out with us for a year stepped out of the gym still kept relationship but right. healing his bicep and got busy with work yeah yeah but he was still dialed in with his nutrients and his food he stepped on the end body after a year and nothing changed he didn't that's lose exactly. any muscle he f- still fueled it he's an active guy i think that's another thing too you know you look back in time our jobs are different now right jobs are more sedentary than they've mm-hmm. ever been the idea of people you know actually physically having to move now they've made machines that do that for you there's not there's not room you know there's that's not a calling like it should like it as it was at one point mm-hmm. um and we can go in the process side yeah sugar's put into everything 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 and sugar is honestly it's a culprit okay mm-hmm. i'm not saying that you shouldn't have sugar I'm saying that being aware of how much sugar is actually being consumed is key. Yeah. Um, we're, we're talking a global, not a global, and a nationwide epidemic of obesity, um, childhood obesity. I mean, the the ex first lady that was her like thing. And Michelle Obama was like child obesity. I'm like, yeah, there's a lot of fat kids out there. Yeah, there you is. Know? And the, that that what that's going to equal in ten years are more or f- overweight adults. And then heart disease, and then the cost of medication. And you're looking at, wow, well, now we're trying to medicate this. And then we could go down this rabbit hole mm-hmm. of the why behind it. <laughs> but <laughs> there's let's plenty just, of reasons. Let's just understand yes. that if you do get to that point, there is a reverse side, mm-hmm. and you can reverse that. It's it, but it's going to take hard ass work, exactly, yeah. because it's easy. I don't know if it's easy to get to a state because you're not choosing to, but it's going to take some work and effort to make that change. Yeah. So now the, on the sugar thing, you know, again, we could go down a very, very strange rabbit hole with, with a lot of these uh, foods that we've been fed our whole lives in a generation before us. But I was reading, was it uh, relentless by Tim Grover? Sure. Uh, he was a attack athletics trains, trained Michael Jordan and Kobe and like, 
Dude is crazy, crazy awesome. But he talks about as part of his program was when you brought a new athlete in is to completely deprive their body of sugar for 10 days. And the comparison is it is worse than going through heroin withdrawal when they take you like completely remove your sugar from your body. Now there's, Jesus. it's a very strict, obviously tough diet to do because there's sugar and everything, everything. But if, if it's removed from your body, your body will go through the same withdrawal symptoms as a heroin addict yeah. who is trying to get yeah. off smack. Yeah. So it's, it'd be like a, a glycogen clinic versus a methadone yeah, clinic. Yeah. Like, yeah, go and get hooked up with like Pez. <laughs> You're in a Pez dispenser. <laughs> yeah. I mean, just a little yeah, bit at a time. Just a little bit of that Pez. A little bit at a time. Yeah. No, I, there's definitely a lot to be said in that. Um, Dr. Usher over at Reform Medicine, mm-hmm. he, he would come in. This is um, 2016 when we were running a lot of boot camps. He'd come and speak and talk about that. And I mean, another guy to have in your podcast, he'd be great. Yeah. If you really to dive into nutrition, the amount of knowledge he had in regards to kind of going back in our lineage of, oh, then we started to mass produce this sort of stuff. And we decided to get Americans hooked on sugar, which honestly, it's you can get Americans will get hooked on anything right now. We're hooked on social media, yeah. you know, sugar, and they'll, they'll have a social, they'll there's have always something. Soon. They're not going to tell you about the good things. We're always learning about what's wrong, right. but, um, he highlights that and he, he goes back to all the way back to like the paleolithic days, right. Yeah. Where we were gatherers hunter and hunters, gatherers, hunter gatherers. And that's where it kind of started. And then there's, um, you know, let's the Arctic, right. Those, mm-hmm. the Arctic tribes, the, no, I'm, lack of a better term, Eskimos. Yeah. They didn't have plant-based carbohydrates. They didn't have plant-based much. They had, whale blubber and maybe seasonal vegetables that they were able to gather. Right. And they have lived. And that's something coming from Usher again. And he's going to, I might be botching this, but he's like, these guys live the longest. Yeah. Like they're long, they're, they live to a hundred before anybody lived to a hundred. It was up in the Arctic and it was because of the food they were consuming. So yeah, there's a lot to be said with that. But it, but if you are, it's it's the it's the other end of the yin and the yang the yin and the yang of getting yourself as far as weight loss goes. Yeah. And I think you know starting at that point because I think that if that leads you into healthier eating, if that leads you into exercise, fitness, all the, like things around it, like that's the core. Things around that just by nature of what you're doing to lose weight and to eat better, naturally the things around you start to get better too. You know, obviously physical appearance and. Um, you know, the way you, your body actually feels and how you move around and, oh, it, it didn't hurt to get up off the couch or it didn't, you didn't have to do the, the three time rock to get out. Oh yeah. Yeah. Right. That's those, those are fun days. Tire shoes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> just the, those, those little things. And once you kind of get past that, everything else, you, your confidence level goes up. Well, if your confidence level goes up, you know, if you're single and ready to mingle, that puts you in a better, I think, mental state to go out and, and, and meet somebody. And yeah. if it's, uh, going into a meeting or going into a business meeting or giving a presentation at work or whatever it is in the, in the business world or in your work life, all of a sudden you start feeling better about it and you start, you know, kind of chest out a little bit, you know, standing up a little bit straighter and articulating what you, you know, the point you're trying to make, you know, people start to listen and it all starts because you made, you know, even if they start with those small bites that you talked about in the open, small bites, and then you start taking bigger ones and all of a sudden the world around you starts to change itself and, opportunity presents itself you'd be amazed you know those things that just they happen because it not because and maybe not universal alignment but you started to put yourself into positions where you met somebody you were in the right place at the right time you happened to you know be going to the gym instead of going through the drive through guess you're going to meet at the drive through the person that takes your money and the person that hands you the food bam Ch- chances are you're probably not going to be besties Maybe, maybe not. I'm not saying they don't have besties. I'm just saying they don't. That's not how you meet them. You're at the gym and you meet somebody, and whether that's in a, a personal relationship thing, a friendship, a business partner, you know, somebody who's got the same goals and drives and dreams as you do, all because you made that one change. You made that one step. You went and saw Brewer, and he, you know, puts you in a position to, um, to have success, accomplish those goals in the weight loss world. All of a sudden, you're like, okay, you kind of get a hold of this goal setting thing, and you start putting goals outside of just your fitness, you're like, oh man, you know what I want to do is I want to, I want to start to get up earlier. Maybe not because I want to get up and work out. That's not, that's not for everybody right away. That's not for everybody like a lot, but I want to get up earlier just so I have a, I'm not, I don't feel rushed. My day doesn't start off and my kids, you know, banging on the door and it's, I got to get time to go to school. I just want that extra time in the morning, you know, set that goal. 
oh, I accomplished that. Wow. And all of a sudden, I mean, 15 more minutes, and what I could do is I could probably go for a little walk around the block and get the blood flowing a little bit. And that, amazingly, and we talked about it several times on this podcast, just that way your day starts can kind of determine where the rest of your day is going to go in a good way and in a bad way. Yep. Set the tone. There's the only bad workout's the one you never did. Absolutely. Yeah, I mean, guarantee if people come in, they'll leave feeling better, more accomplished, and then it's on the next thing. And like you were saying, the stuff outside of life, it could. Be, if you're in a sales position, you could be like, I'm going to do five cold calls today, mm-hmm. you know, and just follow up. You know, I'm going to follow up tomorrow with those. And you just kind of just do a time audit. This is what I'm going to do because this is what's going to maximize my potential because that's the way I'll get more clients, mm-hmm. more sales. Then I can grow my my wealth side of my health. You know, I was, um, I think I saw it on Instagram, but they were talking about wealth. Mm. And they talked about four types of wealth that you have. And you have, or, or wealth, yeah. So in the, you have the one that is what we all assume, which is financial wealth. Mm. You got a lot of money. Then you have the other style of wealth, which is fame. A lot of people know you, you know, your big deal. Um, then you have the wealth of your time, which I mm. think is as, important as finance right your ability to have freedom your ability to wake up when you want mm. you know, go to bed do do with your day what you want and then the last one is health well, mm. and basically having those four in balance with each other and i see it often where i have somebody come in the price point not an issue got all the physical all, all the financial wealth in the world right but oh man i don't know when i'm going to get in because i'm one busy guy and i need to get in because my health wealth is very my that bank account's empty I'm, I went to the doctor and he's like, you're about to get put on diabetes medication, right? You're going to put on insulin. And so having that in perspective, you now you can, there's guys out there, um, you know, we're between Dollar Tree and Harbor Freight, not to throw anyone under the bus, but those guys got a lot of time wealth yeah. that will show up there, you know? Yeah, a lot of time wealth. A lot of time wealth, you know? And uh, probably not much for physical health or financial health. So having those four in balance is kind of the key. And that's what we talk about with people coming in the gym. What are you going to do today for you? You know, if you don't make it to the gym, are you going to do a workout at home? Maybe you went for a walk with your significant other and you put your phones down and you, or maybe you had your phone on you because you don't want to count your steps, right. <laughs> but, but you go sure, and you have an important moment there. Right. You yeah. know, there's other things that you can do to improve your lifestyle. Mm-hmm. That's not just in the gym. And we could and we go for another hour on that topic. But, um, those four, think about that where it's like, all right, where can I, because you can achieve, a, you, it's about having those things balanced out. What's a lot of money if you don't have time? What's a lot of money if you if you if you don't have health? And right. you know, I, you see it all the time. Guys retire. I worked my ass off. All of a sudden they retire, and they're doing the three rock off their chair every day for after their yeah. program. And it's like, all right. So what's the quality of life at this point? So keeping things in in balance is definitely key. Yeah, and I think that's something to look at on a on a regular basis. Is is take a self analysis of where you are at with with your wealth and all of those aspects. Um, and look at on a long-term scale, do you want to be that if you are fortunate to be in the, the really, you know, financial wealth situation and you're really low on the time wealth and you're low on the health wealth, when you get to that point where you're ready to pass the buck, you may not get to that point. You, you may be so in debt in your health wealth account that, all that work, all that time that you wasted, all that time that you didn't see as wasting that you put into to gain that wealth, that's going to somebody else. Mm-hmm. You're going to end up in a hospital bed. You're going to end up six feet underground. And all that work, all that effort, all that time, all that life that you spent to put into that company, that business, to you know that bottom line is going to go to some, you worked your ass off and somebody else is going to reap the benefits of it. Yep. Somebody else is going to get handed that money. It's going to get dispersed. However, it gets dispersed. And all that work is, you know, hopefully they, they, they throw you a good funeral. Yep, pretty much. Yeah. It's uh, it's sad but true. And as much as you want, it's like you, if, if you could go back, you probably spent more money than you would have, you know, of that wealth right. than you would have if you just would have maybe spent an hour audited for yourself or maybe kept things in perspective, you know, kept your stress level at something that's manageable. Um, we've all been there. Where we've bit off more than we can chew. Absolutely. And then our time wealth becomes less. You know, I, have you, you probably were in that situation. I work 72 hour weeks. I remember hearing that stuff, you know, five, 12 hour days. Yeah. Fuck that. No, thanks. I don't want to go back to that ever again. No. So it's about having things in balance. 
being able to say no in 2016, that was one of my actual, one of my new year's resolutions. I was really guilty of, um, if I had a client in the morning that couldn't make the morning, they'd be like, well, I can't really make 6am. And I'm remember I'm there. I get up at, if I do in the morning, I'm up at four yep. to the gym by four forty. opening up the doors, kind of get the place running five o'clock. We start, I can't do 6am, but um, I, I can come later at 6pm. And I go, Oh yeah, sure. I set myself up for a 14 hour day. Yep. Guess what? Just I'm not like doing that. anybody any service at that point. Yep. So learning that early on, and that's in like my first two years, and I wasn't alone on that island. I, my everyone was kind of doing that. Um, now with new coaches coming in who are working for us, we are very big on balance mm-hmm. and understanding like this is not meant to be a 12 hour day. This is meant to be balanced because of those four aspects of wealth. How can we maximize your hour on the floor if we want to grow your financial wealth? But again, I also know there's value in time. Absolutely. You know? So, yeah. Love it. Jim Brewer, co-owner, Momentum Sport Fitness. Where can people find you on uh, the web, on the socials? So Momentum Fitness on Facebook and Momentum Momentum Fitness, Momentum Sport Fitness on Facebook and Instagram. That's where we keep going. Watch our stories. Check seen, out our testimonials. Become one of our successes. I've seen those 5 a.m. folks. I'm like, yeah, you get after it. Yeah. I just got done wrestling a bear. Yeah, I had them this morning. Oh, yeah. yeah, it's awesome. I love it. Well, thank you again for the time and coming in and uh, and helping spread the word and inspiring people. And there's so many other topics that we could have uh, sidetracked on that we'll definitely have to have you back on and we'll we'll find ourselves down that rabbit hole and Absolutely. see where we land. Yep. Thank you so much to Jim Brewer for being a part of the Welcome to Cooperville podcast. A lot of good stuff in that one. Hopefully you took a lot out of it, and we thank him again for coming in and being a part of the show. And I thank you for listening and being a loyal listener. If you are a listener and you are listening on whatever platform that you choose to listen on, on your iPhone, on your Android device, Stitcher, Spotify, we're on the iHeart app, we are on the Radio.com app, and every other place that podcasts are heard, be sure to subscribe to the podcast. You can get updates every time we drop a new episode. Be in the know. Also, follow the podcast on all the social media platforms. We're on Facebook, Instagram, and the Twitter. Just search Welcome to Cooperville. You'll find us. Give us a like. Give us a follow. Much appreciated. Also, want to let you know to check out HolisticRemedies.net on the World Wide Web for all your CBD and beard oil needs. Use the promo code COOPER10 and get 10% off your order. HolisticRemedies.net. 